Alright guys, uh, welcome to our new video. I actually recorded this once already, so this will be basically uh, the... Uh, well, how to actually snipe. Now when I have all the data, gun data that is set correctly. Uh, so how to snipe a normal static target. I already recorded this once between the videos of the uh, how to set a new gun and how to hit a moving target, but... Uh, or well, I thought I had recorded, but I never did. And here we are, redoing it. Uh, so let's just start with the uh, atmosphere. I'm not quite sure if there's some kind of set order how you really should do it. If it's really a static target, you know it won't be moving anywhere. You might want to set the atmosphere after that. No, I th actually, yeah. I think you should always start with atmosphere because it doesn't change too much. All right, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm back. Uh, temperature, 25.9, barometric pressure, 1007. You can type the point 0.3, but that doesn't matter. It will get rounded to four numbers anyway. 50.8, done. And as you can see, the baron press will only be in uh, four numbers. I'm actually, I could check it out. Will it be four numbers or will it just, oh yeah, no decimals, okay, that's how it works. All right, so that's the temperature data. Next up, we, okay, let's decide the target first. Okay, so we this, let's do first with mainly, so this one here will have mainly only crosswind, so it will be a bit easier for me to calculate using the crosswind. But let's have another one after one afterwards. So yeah, this guy here, range thousand meters, will be my target. So I hold tab and R to designate the target, which will update uh, some data for me: uh, the direction of fire, inclination angle, and target range. Also, target not moving. So let's fix that and put this to zero. Hit done. Uh, before that, uh, I need to share this with you. Hold. So right here, we have the uh, ACE function get map data. I'll link it to description. This one here will tell you the uh, uh, latitude of any map. And I think altitude is the some kind of base altitude for ground. Anyway, altitude doesn't matter at all here. Uh, latitude is the only one we are interested in. So for altis, it's 40. And that 40 you put here. So what we know now, latitude, direction of fire, inclination angle, target speed is always zero when it's a static target and we are not moving. And target range. So now we only need the wind. Uh, as you can see from this arrow here, we have mainly only crosswind because it's coming from the left. If we would be firing here towards this target, this target for example, there wouldn't be any crosswind, so it wouldn't make sense to use crosswind. But right now, let's just uh, miss the crosswind because the it's almost the wind is almost like. A, in a straight angle to the direction where I'm, where the target is from my location. So yeah, double check out the right target designated. Open my Kestrel, go to crosswind, measure it like I did in the Kestrel video. Find the direction of the wind. It's blowing pretty hard. Uh, all right. 340, so that would be 325. So basically, I'll just uh, subtract 15 degrees because that's how clock directions work. One clock direction is 30 degrees, so half of that is 15. Uh, so, yeah, crosswind is one 
meter per I mean 5.1 man that's actually very high I haven't gotten used to this at least we get a good example and here wind direction is 9 o'clock and when you measure crosswind it's always either 3 or 9 o'clock because the wind is always blowing from left or right if you're talking about the crosswind and in this case it's even more accurate and that's about it we have everything set you can check the weather data but uh, it really say, think the changes are very minor anyway if there are any and there are none this time and now I feel like I have wrong gun which I do and this is the one we made last time so yeah 8.655 sure and 2.45 man I hate those fives oh well it's still pretty good and yeah let's see what happens we can uh, take a bullet cam let's aim in the middle it will probably go a bit to the uh, right and a bit below the, below the middle but it did hit the target wait how low did it actually go let's retry of course it hit the target but that's still okay I just didn't uh, render the hit marker for some reason All right. Uh, so that's one way to do it. Or if we were shooting here, barely no uh, horizontal effect. Oh yeah, I did that drawing. In the video, I never <laughs> actually recorded. So let's just imagine this is approximately what it looks like. Oh, it's not, but it's close enough. And this is how bullet looks from a, a side, and this is how it looks from front or back. And as you can see the area is much larger so uh, 5 meters per second crosswind does uh, affect more because it will uh, affect a greater area does it make sense because if it was head uh, 5 meters per second headwind it would only flow for this small area so naturally the force which will uh, push the uh, bullet away from its original trajectory will be greater when the area here is greater so crosswind will affect more than headwind because of this let's try here this one is mainly headwind uh, I should, that should be one click away all right yeah sure let's try it out this time I need the headwind Heading set. And what was was it 325? It was 325. Alright. Sure. So in this case the um, wind speed would be 5.5 and wind direction would be 12 o'clock. Because it's blowing from 12 o'clock. And actually it is headwind, so it would be always 12 o'clock. If I was facing uh, 323 minus 180, which is 140, I assume, the headwind would be negative. Uh, or the tail would, tailwind would be 5.6. Anyway, oh, is it increasing a bit? Sure, oh, it didn't even say them. And let's see what happens. So, as you can see, now the uh, elevation must be a bit higher because the uh, target is, uh, you know, I have headwind, there's headwind, so I must 
put a bit higher elevation. And let's see what happens with this one. We'll start it again. Okay. Bullseye. Almost anyway. Alright, but hey, that's pretty easy, isn't it? It's really... I just happen to have only crosswind or only headwind. And that's of course not how it always is. You already know now how to do it, but there's another way to do it, which is, while not as accurate, also I think how Kestrel is intended to be used. So. Um, I'll try to shoot at those targets here. Let's do the one click one again. Uh, wind direction is uh, 8. Yes, it's 8. <coughs> so for that, I want to get the real wind value. 5.7. I just really need to turn till I get the greatest value, which seems to be 5.7. Right here. This is the full wind speed. So 5.7. from uh, 7 o'clock? No, 8 o'clock, of course. Click done. Remember to designate a target. So tap R. Uh, the direction. Uh, range and inclination get updated. Can hit done. And here you have your new calculations. Eight. 0.58, almost 8.6. 2. Point, what was it again? 3.7, almost 2.4. I should do it. And see what happens. Okay, sure. I did hit a target, but I wouldn't necessarily hit the actual man. The thing is, these targets are a bit uh, larger inside than actual people in armor. So let's do one more. Where would it be? Let's say I'll shoot at the guy right around here. Now that's where I already shot at. This one will also have a bit difference in elevation. Let's spawn a guy around there. Oh yeah. Oh. This just is so that if I hold out I get teleported, so I would rather not spawn it exactly there. And I have to hold Alt if I wanna turn the map tools. But that's pretty much there anyway. Oh, I wonder if I could actually spawn here on top of that hill. That's too far, I think. 1.5 clicks. Yeah, that's. We are getting to extreme ranges. With wind this strong. While it's almost headwind, it would be very challenging. And I don't believe I would be able to hit it. But I can try it out. At least the game does render its target. So here you can see I'm measuring the... Uh, or setting the target many times, because so, I want to get sure it's the right one. And this would make sense. Target is designated. All right. Now we can again see that it's almost only crosswind, so we'll only take crosswind into account. Crosswind, set heading, face the wind. Has the wind direction changed? Yeah, three twenty-five is good. Shit, it's only increasing. All right. Three o'clock, because the wind is blowing from my right side. Is everything set? This is like this. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, I, this is probably so far that I would need to have the track coefficient table set to hit accurately for 
range like this. This isn't really how far you're supposed to shoot with this gun anyway. But you can always try. Okay. I do take aim a wee bit to the right side because I just have a feeling that the, uh, you know, the decimal of 0 0.3 here will affect. And also a bit higher. Alright. That wasn't bad at all. That being said, I did have uh, pretty much uh, only crosswind. Let's see. 227. Well, not really. What is the... Uh, So yeah, 250 minus uh, 15 would be 235. At 235, there would be only crosswind. Like literally only crosswind. And my target was at 225. So there, there was still a wee bit of headwind too. But yeah, that's how you do it. Uh, you got a couple of examples now. I like using the crosswind because it is more accurate, you can get the uh, direction of wind much um, uh, more accurately with this way than just uh, giving the approximate clock direction which while has greater error for the uh, direction does take both crosswind and headwind into account. But yeah, uh, that's how you do it. Again, if you have any question, if you were confused by the crosswind thing, ask down in the comments or message me on Discord or Steam. Moving up to the next video, I guess.